Okay, this video is a book review of this book here, How the Irish Saved Civilization by Thomas Cahill. Um, I just listened to the audio CD version of it in the car. It was very pleasant, enjoyable. The, the reader of it did a good job. And um, I had read it before in the past, but I just found it pleasant to listen to it again. Um, I just showed you a quick painting here, Meeting on the Turret Stairs. This is like the most famous painting ever from Ireland. Okay, but let's focus on the book's beautiful painting there. All right. The book was first published in about 1995, and it covers the history of Ireland as it first began um, after the fall of the Roman Empire with the emphasis on its effect on saving the civilization as far as literature is concerned. So it begins with a lot of emphasis on St. Patrick as he helped Ireland transition from being sort of you know, barbaric, Celtic, illiterate with all the chieftains and leading towards the Christianization of Ireland and with the subsequent teaching of literacy and encourage people to learn how to read and study the Bible. Um, subsequent hero of the story is Colum Kill. Colum Kill is also often referred to as St. Columbus, you know, St. Colum Kill. And um, he was a monk and also big on scholarship and reading. And he ended up making a monastery in Iona, which is an island just off the coast of Scotland. And here's a picture of Colum Kill making one of his uh, Bible translations into Latin, uh, copying the manuscript and putting all the drawings in there. And this tradition of making beautiful drawings in the margins uh, led to, for example, the Book of Kells, uh, which was kept initially at the Abbey of Kells. That's where it gets the name, Kells. Um, and you can see how beautiful it is. All the you know magnificent calligraphy and all the drawings. They're, they're works of art as well as being books. Um, so this is now in Trinity College uh, Library in Dublin. And this is the Book of Kells. And it reminds me too, like if you see the Monty Python and the Holy Grail movie and all the little characters they make in the margins, um, it comes from these you know, illustrations like the Book of Kells. Okay, so, you know, St. Patrick lived from 385 to 461 AD and he is born as a Roman in Britain, a Celtic Roman in Britain, but he was then enslaved in Ireland, and despite that, he wanted to go back to Ireland. Okay, he did get a religious education. He eventually became the Bishop of Ireland, uh, but he was a really nice guy, incredibly charismatic, because his life was often in danger, you know, by these barbarians that, um, you know, he had to convince them to convert to Christianity. Not an easy thing to do. Um, and he did a wonderful job of promoting literacy and Christianity in Ireland. And um, the Irish, you know, what did they preserve? They preserved the Latin literature in particular. All the books that were translated already into Latin, Greek books that had been translated into Latin, the Bible, the Irish literature itself, and they were very famous for bookmaking. You know, the other cultures, respectively, that had, you know, the Hebrew literature and the Greek literature were preserved their own literature. So that's really sort of separate entities, um, of literary preservation. Uh, St. Patrick was also famous for loudly proclaiming, uh, Thomas Cahill, the author, claims that he's the first person in history of the world to loudly and unequivocally proclaim the need to stop slavery. He was very big on uh, trying to prevent slavery in Ireland. Um, many Irish, you know, at that time had been sold into slavery. I can tell you also, my Irish ancestors were slaves to the British. You know, my name, Rogers, comes from rouge, like red makeup on a person's face, the French word. The original name of my family was McCrory, son of a red-haired king. And then the, the Brits said, oh, screw you, you're not the son of a king. You guys are the red ones. Lots of redheads in my family. And um, that's where they got the name Rogers. The French uh, take on it comes from the Norman Conquest, you know, 1066, where then French language uh, sort of had a big influence on the English language for hundreds of years. Uh, they talk about three types of martyrdom. Red is to die for Christianity. Green is to work as a monk in a separate space, like, let's like, say, a rural location. And then a white uh, martyrdom was to travel to a foreign land as a missionary monk. Uh, there's a three types of martyrdom. Okay, Colum Kill, it's, you know, it's, it's, here's how it's spelled, but Colum Kill is how it's pronounced. He lived from about 540 to 614 AD, and he was an Irish missionary monk who founded an abbey in Iona, like we said, next to Scotland. And he ended up making about 60 to 100 monasteries, incredibly busy guy. <laughs> it's a lot to achieve in one life. And he was real strong on training them to 
uh, make all the manuscripts, promoting literacy, teaching literacy, teaching um, uh, missionaries, and lots of uh, Catholic uh, future missionaries traveled there to be trained by his through his monasteries. Um, and of course, he led to the Book of Kells. Um, it was sometimes referred to as the Iberno Scottish Mission. Um, by 650 to 850 AD, you know, more than half of the Bible commentaries that could be found were all Irish. The Irish had incredible influence on preserving literacy in uh, the world, in Europe in particular. The books made by the Irish monks were then taken to all the other countries to re-civilize those places that had previously been sort of crushed by the barbarians. Um, and here's the quote from Thomas Cahill. Wherever they went, the Irish brought with them their books, many unseen in Europe for centuries, with the books tied to their waists as signs of triumph. Wherever they went, they brought their love of learning and their skills in bookmaking. In the bays and valleys of their exile, they reestablished literacy, reestablished literacy, and breathed new life into the exhausted culture of Europe. And that is how the Irish saved civilization. So yeah, it's an incredible achievement. And it's very much an Irish thing to this day of loving to read. I can tell you, you know, my, I have a, my, my father's from Ireland, my mother's from a separate country, and my mom's family is actually probably smarter than my dad's, okay? But they don't talk that much about books. My father, you know, he's a physician. He would meet with his brothers and they would just talk for hours and hours about books. And that had a great influence on me growing up to want to read, be like my dad. That really helped me a lot for education. Okay, um, the last line um, we're going to mention here from Thomas Cahill in his book, How the Irish Saved Civilization, is, If our modern civilization is to be saved, it will not be Roman by Romans, but by saints. And I, I think that's an important point.